uh, ab india karega invest our weekly show uh, where we take all your questions and we introduce to you an industry expert uh, who takes a uh, interesting topic and uh, uh, share their information with all you so that you can have a great investment journey so today on this auspicious day of ganesh chaturthi i uh, wish you a very very happy uh, 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 festival and uh, prosperous and, and uh, you fulfill uh, all your uh, dreams in the coming years so without wasting any time uh, i'll introduce myself i am rishabh lunia from novice and uh, along my side we will be very shortly joining with uh, uh, mr bala subramaniam who is md and ceo of birla uh, sun life amc so uh, today's topic is something which is very very close uh, to everyone uh, everybody aspire to do that and uh, so we thought let's keep a generic topic for today and uh, so the topic for today is how can we achieve financial independence and retire early yes you heard me right retire early everyone today wants to retire early uh, so that they can aspire uh, to do whatever they want in the future so before i hand it over to bala subramaniam sir uh, i would uh, just uh, set the tempo tempo with a small uh, presentation which i have prepared uh, which will give you some clues and then uh, we will hear from uh, today's guest speaker uh, in more detail so here i share my presentation all right uh, so yes the topic is how to achieve financial freedom and retire early now uh, so what we have done is uh, in the presentation i have kept it very very simple so that you can understand what are those few steps which you can follow in order to achieve financial freedom in your investment life so the first and the foremost i think which you would have heard from lot many other people uh, just to uh, uh, give you a heads up on this is first we need to identify all our risk and make sure that we are covering them up before we head towards an investment journey uh, so whether it is health insurance whether it is uh, having uh, uh, secure your life with a life insurance and emergency in fund which all of us uh, learnt uh, during covid times how important and how crucial it can be uh, and how uh, it could be saving uh, our lifestyle in those difficult times so first we need to make sure that we are uh, covering all our risk and then you can start thinking of uh, saving your money and investing for various uh, goals so the second step is how do you approach uh, any goal not even retirement but uh, you need to have various financial goals with you all these financial goals are expressed or defined in terms of time and money so if i say uh, i have to buy a car so i need to define it when do i need to buy a car so you can say i need a car after 3 years worth 10 lakhs so now you you have put uh, all the data required to start planning for that goal till the time you have anything missing whether time or money it is difficult for you to plan for that goal now uh, whenever you have all these goals it becomes very very crucial that you prioritize your financial goal because at times it may not be possible for you to uh, save or invest for all the goals at the same time so you need to understand uh, what is those goals where which need the immediate attention and what are those goals which can wait so something like uh, retirement children's education uh, all these goals may have higher priority whereas buying a car going for a world tour may take a back seat uh, uh, in terms of priority now one common question which i ask a lot of viewers is if given a choice and if you need to choose between retirement and children's education what would you choose and primarily i get answers i think more than 90% of the people go for children's education because they feel that that is more important but when we talk in financial planning terms we say that retirement should take the first precedent because a uh, retirement is the only financial goal where you do not have any kind of backup uh when i say you don't have any kind of backup that means you can't go to a bank and say that okay i am retiring tomorrow please uh, kindly give me a retirement loan uh, 
whereas for all other financial goals whether it is buying a car children's education uh, buying a house there are financial product available in terms of loans which you can avail and you can fulfill your goals so that means there are backup and while the time you are fulfilling all these goals you are working so you are eligible also to take a loan but at the retirement you you uh, you are at the fag end of your career and you're planning for your retirement you're going to uh, come out of your job at that point in time banks would not be interested and yes they might say that okay we will do a reverse mortgage on your house but uh, in indian market we we don't see too many people keen on that product because uh, they want to pass their house as a legacy to the next generation so retirement is one goal uh, which needs to take precedence and that is the reason uh, most of you who are into uh, various kind of jobs uh, you would see that the day you started earning there was a deduction from your salary which was for the provident fund which is nothing but you are saving for your retirement so that's the importance of retirement that from the first day of your earning life you have started planning for your retirement but trust me whatever you are saving through pf will not be enough because of the kind of lifestyle we have started living these days so yes you have started but ask yourself will it be enough so if the answer is no then you need to also pump from your side a certain amount towards your retirement goal now when we know these financial goals it's easy for us if we divide them into a uh, short term medium term and long term so that it will help us in terms of planning our investment accordingly like retirement can be a long term goal somebody buying a house or planning to buy a house after 10 years can be a long term goal so depending on your requirement you can put goals into short term long term or medium term and based on that the choice of products automatically comes in like we generally say somebody who looking to invest for long term can ideally invest in equity mutual fund whereas people who are looking to invest for short term they should keep away from equity but there are other products uh, uh, in the mutual fund which are more debt oriented they can be opted for so depending on your uh, priorities depending on your uh, goals you should invest also now uh, i would like to share that the current generation or the generation which is going to come uh, they are up for some challenges in terms of their uh, lifestyle goals and uh, compared to the previous generation so there is a small comparison which we have done in terms of how the life looked like a generation back and how the life looks like now so if you see the previous generation uh, uh, probably 20 years 30 years back used to start their career pretty early so they started their career around 18 20 and then they went uh, to 60 uh, where they take their retirement so automatically uh, they worked for about 35 to 40 years but coming to the current generation where we have seen that the uh, education is taking the precedence people have gone uh, for higher education so they start their career a little late say about 23 25 and as most of you might be thinking and as the topic also goes people aspire to retire early these days so when i do these kind of sessions in corporate the most frequent answer which i get is 45 and 50 a lot of people today want to retire as early as 45 or 50 so what it brings to the table is on one side you are starting your career late on the other side you are wanting to retire early that means the work life which is left is very very less let's say about 25 to 30 and to add to it you have increasing life expectancy so in india what we are seeing from last few years and it will continue for good amount of time that in next 20 30 years we will very soon touch a close uh, touch a life expectancy of about 80 years so retiring at 50 and living till 80 you need to have a good sound plan so that you can sustain your lifestyle during those retirement period and uh, you can enjoy that period as well so this is something which you need to keep in mind focus now just a small example of uh, why starting early because a lot of people say start early how does it make an impact on our investment uh, or especially on our retirement corpus because this is very very crucial so we have taken a uh, two examples here mr a and mr b mr a who started as soon as he got into a job at the age of 25 uh, started with a 5000 sip every month till uh, he decided though he wanted to retire early he said let me plan till 60 so he from 25 to 60 he 
started putting that 5000 every month uh, so about 35 years every month he invested 5000 and uh, on retirement he found that his product has given a cagr of about 15% and when he checked his corpus he was really surprised that okay he could make uh, about 7 and 1/2 crores out of his investment so if you look at the total investment amount 5000 into uh, let's say 12 into 35 years it works out to be somewhere close to 21 lakhs that means mr a has put 21 lakhs from his pocket and because of power of compounding which you keep hearing in our industry very frequently because of that power he could multiply many fold that amount over the next 35 years mr b on the other hand started his career at 25 but first 5 years he wanted to enjoy his life he didn't uh, give due respect to the investments so he started his investment journey like mr a at the age of 30 with a delay of 5 years but from 30 till 60 he followed very religiously the same thing with mr a did okay so he could also uh, invest about 18 lakhs from his side during the same tenure but when he came out and when he saw his retirement corpus at the end of 60 years he found only 3 and 1/2 crores so i'm sure a lot of you might be shocked that just 5 years delay uh, just 3 lakh rupees difference in terms of contribution from two person but because of compounding because of uh, uh, the power of compounding uh, you can see that difference so the difference between these two figure we call it as cost of delay every year you delay in terms of your investment it will cost you heavily uh, and you will realize it much much later so because of this i would really urge that all of you who have started uh, please continue that because the momentum is something which is very important and all of you who are on the sidelines waiting that okay when the market will go down and then i'll invest i would say there is no right time but you can start whenever you think you are uh, ready and then um, have a diversified portfolio which will bring your risk down so depending on your goals you can have a mix of equity fixed income real estate and gold these are the broadly four asset classes and then there are few new asset classes which you can also look at now before i end and hand it over uh, to the guest speaker i would just like to uh, urge you that investing is like a chinese uh, bamboo tree i'm sure you would have heard about this story so chinese bamboo tree uh, for first 4 years of its life uh, you hardly see any growth but what happen happens during that time the tree is growing internally below the root making it the foundation very strong and if in the fifth year you suddenly see a spurt Uh, the tree grows almost 80 meters in one full year so investing is very very similar to that first 4 5 years you may not see magical returns on your portfolio but what you need to do is you need to continue your investment if you are a, a sip just keep on uh, pumping into your systematic investment plan continue the plan and as the time passes you will see the magic of compounding showering on your investment so discipline is very very important uh, for uh, financial freedom and uh, retiring early so with this uh, i will uh, close my session and uh, uh, before i call upon uh, uh, the guest speaker i will just uh, would like to introduce uh, the guest speaker uh, i would just uh, read a brief uh, intro about uh, um, bala sir so fondly known as bala sir uh, mr bala subramaniam is the managing director and the chief executive officer for aditya birla sun life asset management limited a stalwart of the mutual fund industry he brings with him uh, nearly three decades of rich experience in the mutual fund industry as portfolio manager both in fixed income and equity Mr Bala Subramaniam has been awarded CEO of the year title by Asia Asset Management in 2018 and 2020 under his leadership the AMC has won accolades from various external and media agencies he has been conferred with Aditya Birla Group's outstanding leader award in 2015 and leader of leaders award in 2018 by the group chairman Mr Kumar Mangalam Birla Mr Bala sir is closely associated with key industry bodies uh, like SEBI 
and he is also a member with SEBI Investor Protection and Education Fund. So I would not like uh, you to wait any further and I would like uh, Bala sir to come and take the platform and uh, I'm sure people will have a great time for next half an hour. Over to you, Bala sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank, thank, thanks, Rishabh, um, for having me part of your um, educational uh, series. And um, as you rightly put it, I was listening to you in the earlier uh, presentation. I think clearly what you said is something, is an aspiration, is there in the earlier generation, has been there in the earlier generation, is there in the current generation as well. Okay, the retirement early is always there. I think most of the time from the investment point of view, in the investment world, that, uh, that most of the time where we all underestimate is the power of uh, compounding. The power of compounding is something in the investment world is widely believed. And that's something I would encourage everyone to keep that as focus area before you make your investment. The reason I am specifically saying is that if somebody puts in a deposit giving a monthly income of 7% or quarterly income of 7% or maybe annual income of 7%. At the same time, you also put the same money in a cumulative deposit of say 7%. The money that you get in a cumulative deposit is far higher than the money that you get actually in the either monthly income product or quarterly income product or the annual income product. And the reason I'm saying this is that money that you receive in your hand invariably is spent in some form or other. It is not put into use actually creating a power of compounding. The first and foremost principle in any investment world, understanding the power of compounding on the basis of which you plan your investment is extremely important to get the real power of the money multiplier effect. As Richard was mentioning, that 500 rupees savings every month over a period of 25 years, is a 7.53 crores. That is nothing but a power of compounding. I think that is the first and foremost principle in which any investment uh, functions. The second is the uh, function that works in the, in the investment uh, world, which I think again, in a day-to-day -day life, which all of us are busy, we may not realize it clearly as to how we plan our future. I think the plan, the planning of futures can be made more automatic, and more realizing at the early stage of our career that yes, this is something which I'm earning. The morning is actually split into two, three parts. But of course, every person I think is earning the beginning of their career, need to spend their money for various needs, including enjoying their life for some period of time. At the same time, as Risha was mentioning, every individual has got various needs. That's our future in nature. For the various needs, there are many means in which I think we can build your future. One, of course, is savings. Second, of course, is borrow to the limited extent. And that gives a leverage benefit. Therefore, you build your house by paying EMI. There's nothing wrong in that. And again, something one has to plan it early. And while doing that, investment may continue as making investment by starting your investment early is also extremely important. That's something that continues. The one other factor, of course, one has to just keep in mind that anybody who plans for such aspirational investment for the future, there are two, three things that Jeff will remember them. One, of course, when I start early, I always start early at a small sum. But one of the things that all of us forget is that all the small sums, every time it keeps growing, especially the people who are in the working life, they normally forget that, that every year, the salary levels, you start with the X amount and then keep growing every year, linked to the inflation, especially if somebody is a public sector employee, the very clear formula that exists, the, it will always keep rising on the basis of the inflation number, either every one year or every three years. The private sector employees get the average increase in salaries ranging from 7 to 12%. And within the 7 to 12%, some people may get even 10, 20 to 15% kind of range they will get, depending upon how they perform in the organization. I think that's if you have to just draw a similar analysis, 
in every sector there is a cost of inflation exist so while the cost of inflation can be said that you need to save for inflation also remember on the basis of the cost of inflation your income level also rising this income level will rise up to an extent up to certain period i think there is a starting period this if you take the bulk of you start low salaries then you keep rising you keep rising you reach certain peak level in terms of salaries or the income then you start coming down the start coming down doesn't happen only from our retirement it starts coming in coming coming down even before that in terms of your increase in salaries it stops beyond a point therefore any investment that you make clearly i think one has to keep in mind while we start early with a small sum of amount also we should remember the small sum of amount has to also keep rising the reason i am specifically saying that when i started my own investment way back in 1992 i always felt that for 500 rupees savings per month is sufficient or maybe that is the only thing that you could afford therefore on the basis of the salary and income that one had at that point of time so 500 rupees sap starting was sufficient at that point of time that was the one which is applicable but having seen a rise in salaries along the way each year either in the same organization working or moving your job from one to other the definitely the income level rises quite significant while the income level rises significantly of course your family also gets expanded the need get expanded while one has to plan for the increase in family members or the expansion of the need that one has along with that the refined rupees savings that has been started as a early investments in sap need to also be increased remember that the increase in the refined rupees to go to any amount has to also be significantly higher to plan your retirement early that something is 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 a key if you ask me in my own opinion that's extremely key in building in fulfilling your aspiration to retirement early otherwise if you don't have this kind of principle then there is a high probability that one retires early but not having enough resources at the time of retirement for them to fulfill the needs which again comes on the basis of the elongated lifetime as rishab mentioned the life cycle the lifetime everywhere is increasing i think if in japan if i have to take an example today the people even at the age of 70 they get pulled back for employment because they remain healthy they remain young even at the age of 70 therefore they can work as efficient as any youngsters therefore there is a policy in, in japan to give employment for people who are more aged more than 70 for one simple reason their life long their their life which will going to remain for longer therefore as you said your expected life is actually going to be longer and then we have a plan to retire early definitely planning on the on the way i mention about when starting early and investing continuously is all important and then keep increasing that as the 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 monthly investment itself the five becoming six six becoming seven seven becoming 12 Uh, likewise at each year also increasing your contribution to plan for your investment very important the second of course is very important in in, in choosing the uh, in the retirement planning as i mentioned about power of company is very important every 1% incremental return that i get the power of compounding in the long years as you give a longer time for the same 1% to uh, keep invest keep giving a return on your investment is something extremely powerful there used to be days in the early days of our career when you are building up our your mental math clearly we used to say that whatever the money that i put it has to get doubled in certain number of number of year i mean that is the way the indian human tendency the works if you go to the post office you say you get your money will be doubled there used to be days when interest rates were high even government of india bonds like Postal savings deposits used to get doubled in every five years. There used to be a time when I was young, maybe about thirty, thirty years back. Then in the interest rates for India is very, very high. At that point of time, any money that you put in postal deposits will double in say five, five and a half years. As interest rates came down, the five and a half years doubling became seven and a half years. It's called Indra Vikas Patra. I don't think it is there anymore. At the same, uh, same characteristics. but as it becomes longer the naturally the doubling of your money 
becomes a 10 years. It is nothing but the interest rate that you get, the return that you get is the one determines your doubling of your money. A simple way actually to calculate is that 72 divided by the expected interest rates will tell you how many number of years your money will get doubled. And that's again the power of compounding. This interest rates which actually determines is doubling of your money also want you to understand where is that probability of getting the higher return given the fact that the rising inflation market, the rising prices are whatever said and done, any prices that we have today that we pay today is all gone up manifold the last 15 years. Somebody would have paid for electricity charges, say 50 paisa, maybe about 25 years back. Today is paying about 4 rupees. The same gentleman who would be paying 4 rupees, the, the nearby household will be paying about 6 and a half. Maybe because of the number of ACs that he uses, number of times he uses the power would be substantially higher. Therefore, the meter for him actually different from each other. And based on the increased usage of services, the cost also goes up. Many times we don't remember this, we don't, we don't realize this. As you start becoming, there is like using an AC car and non-AC car, it makes a huge difference in terms of price difference. Therefore, there is a cost escalation. The same way there is a cost escalation, in order to meet the cost escalation, in order to increase, the, in order to meet the growing expenses on the other side, some are known, some are unknown, some are uh, in, line, in line with the, the trend that exists uh, because everyone wants to remain modern, lifestyle changing, we all want to spend money that reasonably well uh, by, by keeping our standard of uh, living. In such a scenario, we also many times do not remember there is an increase in cost. Therefore, it's making that uh, realization uh, is important. In order to ensure that you don't, of course, go out of pocket and making the investments clearly on, on an on a, on a understanding where the power of compounding is high, uh, that's something is extremely important. In the whole model, the power of compounding is actually is very simple. Power of compounding is, a, is very simple in terms of where it can go and how it can be calculated. If we again go on the basis of the traditional way of investment, fixed deposit investment, and mutual fund fixed income scheme investment, equity investment, mutual fund equity investment, and real estate and gold. On each of the asset classes, if you just ask a simple question to yourself, what is the likely return will come, say, in the next one year or three years or five years? I'll give you an answer. Which is asset class will give you high return? Of course, every high return, we need to remember that it comes along with the risk. There is absolutely no return with no risk. And that's something all of us have to remember. That return always comes in associated with the higher risk associated with that. Higher the expectation of return, higher the risk. But as long as one is able to give Time for the risk actually to not materialize. So then the risk that I'm assuming it can materialize, or the risk which I'm assuming may not materialize. So the risk may not get materialized uh, for a longer period, if we hold it for a longer period. Therefore, the investment that one makes, how long we make the investment is also extremely important. So this again something I'm a firm believer that all of us, when we start beginning our career, say at the age of 25, 26, and clearly we don't, we, we don't think, start thinking, I'll retire the age of 60. Nobody says at the age of 25, I'll retire as soon. So the retirement starts coming into the minds of people. Only, up, only you are reach a size, you reach the age of about 45 or 50, or you have two growing children, they go to the college, or they start working, then suddenly realizing, let me retire earlier than the 60 age. Therefore, when you start at the age of 25, 26, clearly then the return expectation that you can have till your potential retirement age and the time that you have is easily visible. See, if somebody has started at 25 and then see, like saying, thinking that you'll retire at the age of 55, naturally he has about 30 years of working life. 30 years of working life is something is a long period. Then why to worry of investing that kind of amount in equity? And why is specifically saying this, most of the time we plan for retirement, but you also don't sufficient risk 
of investing in choosing the right asset class, which could be considered as a risky asset class. But at the same time, that risky asset class will come in your mind, same as risky, therefore, I do not go for it. So this is not a conservative. Sometimes we mix up between conservatism, uh, risk covers, and so on and so forth. But we, for, we probably forget the basic principle, the longer period, the risk gets mitigated. It's like, it's like, it's like, uh, like even the life, we go through ups and down cycles, but every cycle of tough time stays for about two years, again, come back for the good. And that is the way I think if you look at the investment world also, if definitely if you know very clearly that you are the age of 25 or 30, 55 is the retirement age, either 25 or 30 years, a long period for benefiting out of the power of uh, compounding. That's something is another principle one of course has to keep in mind while making the uh, investment. And then the third, of course, is, is each of the asset classes. And then one has to also remember what is the maintenance cost? I think most of the time when we buy an assets, we do think that actually that every asset class will make an sporadic investment or intuitive filling uh, investment, such as real estate, such as uh, gold, or such as any other asset class, jewelry and so on and so forth. There are two, three things that one has to mind is called economic value. It's called economic value that every asset class that you take, what is the economic value it creates? So the economic value that is being created in a fixed deposit is your return, fixed return that comes with the economic value. The economic value that gets created in the equity is the economic value that it creates in the equity. It is the investment that you made in the company and his growth rates is actually becomes your economic value. The our mutual funds equity investment that you make, the underlying investment that we make in various companies, that company's growth over a period of time becomes your economic value on the base of which return comes. Whereas gold is something, what is the economic value comes? There is absolutely no return on that. There is only storage value. Except, of course, the price keep rising depending upon how the world is moving. There is absolutely no recurring recurring income generated by the asset class uh, as, as something or just keep in mind. If there is no recurring income created by that asset class, then you must remember such asset class, your cost of maintenance high, then it lead into your, uh, lead into your uh, the future value to that extent because there is no recurring income produced by that asset class in which you are making the investment. The same thing if we take the real estate, of course there is a value increase, absolutely no doubt, but is there any recurring, recurring income or the, or the economic value that gets created? Also, one has to ask, ask a question in your mind. Keeping this question in mind clearly, build your portfolio between the four asset classes which Rishabh mentioned about is something that will remain key. So in this case, I think dominant component of your comp position as if you're able to build on those asset class which creates an economic value, your income on a regular basis, which can be a compounding in nature, or it could be a recurring in nature, whichever way you look at it, I think that something is visible, then one of course has to, one can make such decisions on the investment. Then the last part, I think, which most of us in the retirement planning that we do, uh, we do uh, ignore is, is the taxation. I think the taxation is something that also gives you additional one or two percent extra return in the portfolio without it comes to your account in the form of interest income or the growth. It all comes indirectly. That's something in saving that comes to your, uh, the disposable income is also something one should not forget about it. Because the ret retirement planning also come along with the tax planning along the way each year by me of making your investments in the right classes, classes, yield as schemes, which of course the government of India allows every individual to put up to 1.5 lakh rupees in PPF, in mutual fund, uh, the ELSS uh, schemes. And that's something I think one should not forget the fact that such investments adds to your kitty in building your future uh, planning without you knowing about it. Most of the time, investments always generate higher return if you don't track it. And if you don't uh, keep seeing your value of the investment on a continuous basis, allow it to grow as the Chinese uh, bamboo tree. Give a time of four years after they allow it to grow. The more you do that, clearly the compounding, I think, becomes very, very high. 
With respect to this, I just want to just highlight before I show you one or two presentations in my slides. PPA versus LSA schemes of mutual fund schemes. Most of the times, you all will get to hear some kind of presentation coming from various people saying the real assets would have given you a substantially higher return than the PPF. The simple reason is the power of company, which I mentioned about, if I put for 10, 30 years, I annualize interest rate of say 8% or 8.5%. The same money, if I put for 30 years, without knowing that 8.5% is going to come or not, I do not know 8.5 will come. I do not know whether I'll get 5%. I do not know whether I'll get 14%. I don't get, I do not know whether I'll get 20% also. But given the fact you're making the investment over 30 years, also given the fact that equity asset class on a 30-year basis, after going all the volatility, can potentially give you much more than 8.5%, then it is a no-brainer. So that is the way decision has to be taken. Most of the times, by way of debate, uh, uh, discussions, analysis, we end up taking and uh, not taking any decision. And that is one. Second is we also analyze the risk associated with all such investment too much to the too much to the uh, analysis that we do and knowing knowing that this risk is there that risk is there definitely the risk is there but remember that the moment you give a time frame of longer time frame the example which I gave you 25 55 minus 25 or 25 minus 30 the moment you give that clearly the 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 benefit of power of compounding comes just because the sheer factor of the long-term investing takes care of all the ups and downs. That's something, again, you have to keep in mind as part of the retirement uh, planning. I just want to show you a few slides because of uh, one reason that I talked about risk. I talked about the long-term. Uh, you definitely get to earn a higher return on risky asset classes. That's something if you're able to do that efficiently without getting worried then naturally your investment will give you the benefit so that you can actually plan your retirement early by way of doing this kind of disciplined way of investing your hard earned money. I'll just give you, give me a few seconds. Rishab, can you see these slides? Yes, sir, it's visible. You can just put them on uh, presentation mode and it'll be great. Yeah. Perfect, sir. So this is, this is something I just wanted to show you. Show you. See, if you look at the market, uh, this is something I think generally people, I, this is what I just want to talk about, the risk. The market, whether it is any market, any financial market, is always driven by four things. If you take the slides on the right side, there is a, a word with wordings, which is that the sensex has displayed cyclical tendency between three years time period. We just read the four, uh, words are given there. Despair, hope, growth, and optimism. The market always goes through four different type of period. Despair is something all of us think world has come to an end. I do not know what is going to happen tomorrow. And that's the way I think most of us get into the life market in every cycle. I think the pandemic March 19, March 20 was that kind of period. The world came to an end. And nobody was thinking, nobody was knowing what is going to happen, lockdown, so on and so forth. Then suddenly comes, all of, all of a sudden, somewhere it comes, suddenly the hope comes. Hope comes from where? Everyone suddenly starts reacting, government starts reacting, they pump in money, and so on and so forth. And then hope comes. The hope continues to remain, because we remain hopeful, and then say the government continues to do something or other, they remain hopeful. Then suddenly the growth comes, and finally optimism comes. And each of these phases in the market goes through every three, four years cycles. But remember, the despair situation do not come every now and then. I think if you look at my chart on these slides, between the year 2019 and 2022, if you see, this is the only the area of the chart, you see a dip in the market very sharply. How many times such a dip has come in the market? Just go, I just see the slides. How many times such a sharp dip has come in the market? except this period between 2019-2021 and between the period between 2007-2009 period, which is the lemon brothers collapses globally. That's the only time where the market sharply dipped. All subsequent period markets have kept a momentum which is an uptrend. This is what I mentioned about PPA versus equity. Equity doesn't give you return guarantee, 
But in the long run, what does they need if the chart actually remains like this? That's one. Second, I think the learning that you ought to take from this slide, if you look at the market into three-year cycle, I'm taking a three-year cycle, Every three-year cycle, market goes through ups and downs. If you take 2001, 2003 period, the lowest of the sensex that point of time, unfortunately, I've been there in the market since 1992, from a 900 rupees sensex, and today the sensex is 58,000. If you see in this slide, 2001, 2003, the 2,600 was the uh, minimum index level it reached, the maximum it reached 5,800. The next period, if you take 2004 and 2006, the maximum reached 13,972 as again 5839 of the previous three years. And then 4505 is the bottom as again see 2,600 of the previous three year bottom. Again, if we go to 2007, 2009, the high was 2,788,73 as again 13,972 of the previous three years. And then 8160 is the bottom, which is as again 4505 of the previous three years. Likewise, if we, if we see every three years, you can make one assumption, the market forms a new high and the market forms also a bottom. It also forms a bottom. The fact of the matter is the bottom is higher than the previous bottom. This is the bottom of previous year, previous three years. This is the bottom of the, uh, the current three years. So this becomes a base. The next bottom is actually higher than this. So what does it mean? The long run, the market remains uptrend. Market, of course, goes through ups and downs. The swing can be quite extensive every three years, but despite the swing being there, given the fact that we have a 25 years, 30 years of time period you are giving, in the 20, 35 years, all the ups and downs will get mitigated, just by your shared principle of staying invested, nothing else. It's very highly disciplined, easy to, easy, difficult to, uh, difficult, uh, easy to follow, difficult to digest, given the fact that it's a very simple thing, always difficult to follow. That's, I think, if one is able to build as part of your Earning mantra, clearly that takes care of your, the, the potential risk that is associated and yet benefit out of such investment in the long run. Second, I just want to tell you that we have done some analysis that again, uh, the winners sometimes keep rotating. I think all of us, I think in your own life cycle, sometimes uh, I see as a lead, as a CEO, I see in my own team, my own team members sometimes feel happy if we all give them meet expectation rating. If we give a uh, far expectation rating for some year, and the next year, if I give him a lower rating, he feels sad because last year I got a higher rating. This year, I'm not, I'm not getting sufficient rating. This again goes through for every individual. If you have to draw a parallel of that into the market, I think if we take 2010, the period, I have, I have given it 2010, 11, 12, up to 2020. This is one of our chart, we call it the weekly chart, which is the chart of the week. We call it the cow, we call it every week, we come out with something or other. In this, if you see, the year 2010, the one which is there in the first box, gold asset class, in that particular year, gave 24.5%, the gold asset class. And then if you go down the period, the last row, if you see, you will see the table is giving 2.7%. Just imagine, somebody has chosen table saying it's the most safest after Lehman Brothers crisis. I would go and put all my money in the safety asset class, this is a government second, a government of India bond. Just imagine how much you have got, only 2.7%. And that's, I think, is the huge difference that we get in between the rest of classes. Let us assume that same, uh, the, keep the say, say, CY10 in your, in your memory. And then let us go and see uh, CY, uh, CY, uh, uh, CY14. We go and see actually CY14. If you see CY14, Gold in the CI 10 was the first one, gave 24.5%. The asset classes gave the highest return, <coughs> the year 2014, is a smaller, small cap, 69.4%. <clears throat> then followed by 61.8% of mid cap. The same mid cap gave only 20% in the year 2010. The multi cap gave 39%, as in large cap gave 19%. Then you go down actually, <clears throat> gold, which is the 24.5% at the top, the year 2010. In the year 2014, it gave only 0.7%. Just see the difference. An asset class which is given 69.4% is the highest. <clears throat> On the same year, there is one same asset class of gold, which all of us felt was a great investment to make in the year 2020-10 by getting 24.5%. That gave only 0.7%. This is the way 
the market goes through cycles the market we may say me as a bala as an individual being in the financial market for 30 years i'll come and give a view market will go up i'll give you so much return and so on and so forth that at the end of the day the cyclic cyclicality of the market cannot be ignored and cannot be predicted by anybody for the matter however good they are cannot be predicted the only the way it can be predicted by staying invested by investing regularly at regular interval by keeping a faith in the market that yes in the long run market will do well as i showed in my previous slides in the short run market will go through ups and downs the what is most important in the whole asset class is the allocation <clears throat> while making this investment clearly as i mentioned in the beginning there is example i gave the most important in every asset class is allocation how much to invest which instrument to invest how long i have to invest how long i have to stay invested i think this is simple principle of investment as we are able to do that very very regularly keeping in mind my own income levels keep rising please don't forget that well my income levels for everyone keeps rising expenses for everyone keep rising for most occasion income rising is as much higher than the expense rise we don't we may probably spend one month on a holiday and therefore my expenses are gone up no doubt remember i get salaries for 12 months i don't spend the same way on 12 months therefore my net income that comes to my hand invariably is higher than the net expenses i make on the whole year even if i spend more than what i spent in the previous year or uh, that's something i think we keep as a principle there is a money is coming to you coming to you with an excess of your need that money has to be uh, invested for long term then only you'll be able to actually retire early and that something is quite possible through various instruments as being advised by grow and and that something i think you must just keep in mind one or two things i'll just mention man mention about before i wind up open up for questions and is one of these this this is as it says that warren buffett says that you start uh, savings uh, uh, you, st you start spending after you complete your savings i think mean, beautifully is said in the year 2009 when india faced with the satyam collapse in india well you remember this collapse he gave one simple principles of investing is spend what is left after your saving i think mean, if you keep that as a principle clearly you will have uh, savings which is unknown to you but it comes for longer term second of course is the is the other principle of course is the as i mentioned about leverage benefit and most of the time we do we do hesitate to take housing loan the form of an if by paying the emi i think if you are nearly start your career and if you are able to build your futures even through the methodology it does give you many benefits for your retirement earning that you have a house it can come through the mi on one side your wealth creation can happen through the sip on the other side and both can hand hand in hand this is also something one has to keep in mind if you take a mi it gives you benefit of low interest rates to build your future house At the same time to build your future other needs can also happen to the sips while we are planning for mi along the side also keep aside some money for sip and that is why you are actually power of compounding you get significant benefit is like investing in deposits versus investing in high growth assets the power of company what i mentioned about differs in sip it gives a power of company is very high emi is a status quo interest rate remains the same therefore the flight straight curve therefore you don't incur you don't get the benefit of power of compounding in the form of expenses that something you must keep in mind and last of course is the is the principle that one has to just keep in mind as is generally mentioned is the start Uh, early uh, drive slowly and reach uh, reach early the same way if you have to just look at it start early in your investment invest regularly on your investment at the same time on the base of investment regularly you are making you can also plan your retirement early is something as a principle that you can apply so the same principle applies in your investment world just keep this in mind as part of the broad principles on the investment world that in my view i think will make your retirement much more easy than what you think is much easier to get the retirement early uh, aspirations easily fulfill fulfillable but as long as you keep the discipline of investing as i mentioned in my last slide with this let me stop and over to risha thank you so much sir uh, i think as always uh, whenever you come to the show uh, you make 
uh, these concepts look so simple uh, and you have given those four or five uh, important points which all the investors can follow and fulfill their dreams by investing in the right way. So now uh, we will take on the questions. We have been getting a lot of questions uh, from our viewers. So uh, there are two questions which are similar. So I will club both of them and then ask. Uh, I'm sure, sir, uh, you've been asked this question many a times uh, now that market at all time high, uh, is it the right time? And if yes, then what strategy one should follow, especially people who are on their journey towards their retirement? What kind of strategy they should follow at this point in time? So I think uh, the market, as I, as I mentioned in my slide, definitely the market today is at uh, 58,000 index. There is still hope that remains that market will touch a new high. And as it touches new high, definitely the risk in the market for it to fall would also be emerging. Therefore, keeping that in mind, can I actually hesitate to invest in the market? You cannot, given the fact that in the long run, you will probably see the next five years, if you see the Sensex may be trading around 70, 70 with an index or even more than that, purely because of the, the rate of growth in the economy, will, I think, will come back. So my own assumption is the last one year, the, the, there is an economic slowdown and there is a high probability that economic pickup will also happen in the next few years on the basis of what the government of India is doing uh, to revive the economic growth. And you see most of the global uh, economies are spending, increase their spending and the worldwide to build the infrastructure. That's all of them should come, bring back the growth and then again, positivity will come back. I think that's being the case in the long run of the market. You must, if you, somebody has not started the SAPs or investments into the mutual funds or equity or any other financial class on the basis of advice that you give, uh, that's something you must not uh, forget and start the investments if it is not done. So keeping a close eye on the market, that dial, the one thing that principle that you should keep, most of the mistakes are always made in the market. When the market is high, they want the market to come down for the considering the investment. It never comes down, therefore they don't. When the market comes down, they want the market to come down further and then they delay the investment. Therefore, keep that in mind as part of your investment decision making. And start the investment, even if the market is high, and with the intention to keep the, you are making the investment for long term. Thank you, sir. I think uh, so. the message is very clear. If you have not started, uh, start systematically and uh, I think markets will always make new hires in, in the long run. So I think that was great, sir. Sir, uh, for retail investors, other than mutual funds and stocks, uh, what are the other options which people can include uh, while uh, uh, they are on their journey towards retirement, apart from mutual funds and uh, stocks? See, the one or two investments which, of course, uh, predominantly exist, which is most of the uh, investors across the world to consider is the uh, real estate as one as a class. The real estate can be con 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 considered into two parts. Huh? One is the buying of a land. Within the buying of land, you can think about agriculture land versus non-agriculture land, which is for the purpose of uh, uh, building a house. And, and then, then you have the house itself. Huh? And within the, within the uh, real estate, again, you can think about residential versus commercial. So these are the investments. Again, it remains one of the investment opportunities. That's one. Second is, um, even uh, today, direct equity investing is coming. But of course, one has to be extremely careful about direct equity investing. Not that direct investing, equity investing is bad or something is harmful. As long as you take the right advice, you buy the right companies that has got a power of company in the long run, definitely it makes sense actually to consider that investment as well, as long as you understand it better. And third, of course, I think India provides this point of time. So many times, I don't have an aspiration to go and work in US, or maybe I don't know, I don't get my HMB visa to go and work in US, but I'm working, of course, in India very happily, peacefully. But can I make investments in global market? Yes. Today, I think India provides an opportunity to even invest your money abroad to some extent, especially for people who are fully exhausted the investment opportunity in India. Even they can invest in actually global market as well. That's why I think international funds are coming. Therefore, that's also something can be thought about as part of diversification. And finally, is the is the uh, today, of course, in terms of asset class like gold, which is of course is coming. Um, I think gold, as I mentioned about the power of company below, except the storage value. 
even silver as an asset class also is coming i think these are some of the asset classes i think in the future will emerge there will be variety please remember the more the variety is there it will become that much more difficult to choose the chances of you choosing more varieties are given the chances of using the inferior product that gives the lowest possible return is always very very high therefore that was the gold most of the people choose as best investment believe me is gold has got a glittering value that's not the economic value which most of the people don't realize it at the whereas they always think i have a lot of gold is of no value beyond a point so because what of company is missing just don't make this mistakes when you have variety choose the right as a class that can give you a power of company effect great sir i think uh, certainly these options will be really handy for our investors who can who are ready to start their uh, investment journey now the next question is very uh, open ended uh, it's like how much money do i need uh, um, for achieving financial freedom so is there a formula which somebody can follow uh, uh, which they need to know uh, in terms of that okay uh, that okay now i have enough and now i'm financially free so how do they go about doing it see one of my own principle uh, which of course i have been following this for uh, quite some times so asset allocation of course you will advise on some allocation on the basis of certain formula and so on and so forth asset allocation can vary from one uh, advice to other advices i only put one simple asset allocation formula if you have 100 then you this you actually put an expectation out of 100 we put in equity what is the likely return for next 10 years then you take fixed income what is the likely return for next 10 years you take gold what is the likely return for next 10 years you put real estate what is the likely return for next 10 years your own intuitive feeling will tell you equity will give me 15% fixed income will give me 7% then the real estate will give me say 11% gold will give me 5% or 3% then you know very well out of the four asset classes where you should go overweight where you should go underweight right that's it, as simple as it right and out of 100 rupees you will put maximum money in those assets which will give you the highest possible return which is equity if you take that formula 15 where is the highest return coming then you take the weighted average allocate the rich should have simple math when i go to excel file put in excel in the excel file put the weighted average exposure that you have link to the expected return on a 10 year basis then that is where i think you will go and put maximum of your money in this formula the despite 15% coming in from equity and despite only 7 11 and 3% coming from uh, fixed income real estate and gold you still have about 60% only in equity the rest of the actually allocate that's where the discipline comes and in this discipline of the 60 and the allocation if you just keep changing every now and then and then i think you you you'll win the race so this is what i i believe that any investment should be always made on the basis of expected possible return on a longer time frame don't take a short term for short time frame because short time frame you always get it wrong true take a longer time frame that is the time you'll get it right thank you sir so i think you have also answered another question which was okay how do i start investing so this is a great way that you take a long term view ask yourself and based on the answer which you get allocate more money into uh, the asset classes which you think will deliver greater returns and based on your uh, financial goals you you can achieve now sir uh, markets at all time high another question which comes very frequently is is are we closer to a crash or what are the threats at this point in time which as an investor we need to be uh, looking for and in case something happens of that sort what should be a strategy for a retail investor at that point in time see i think market may come off i think see the market actually need not necessarily crash i think most of the time we think market will crash see the market crashing will be function of various things market crash comes only if the world go through some tough uh, development some development which is either like a war or something where the economy is going to just collapsing consumers are generally not keen in buying anything right the moment i think the moment they start seeing the dark period which is basically i said despair period then only you will see the market crashing so market never crashes on the basis of valuation see valuation is something remains on hope company's valuation is on hope always If you look at the period, the number of times the hope remains too much high, therefore the crash will not come that much faster. Where you will see a tough time in the market, the market will go through a consolidation period. It's like Japan, 
uh, for 25 years was going through a recession period, Japan. That means somebody living in Japan for 25 years, they went through a pain period. But still they were living happily, right? Therefore, we'll probably go through a period of, the market will test you. Sensei is setting 58,000, is not going below above 60. It goes to 60, come back to 58. It goes to 60, come back to 55. You'll see that period also for one or two years. The market will not go up, it will remain flat. Anything that you buy is not going up, not coming down. That is also sometimes will test the patience. This is what we have seen in the market. By not doing anything, also market can test your patience. This, I think, will probably will come in the next one or two years. My own belief is 2022-2023 could be a flat period. Could also be a period of downtick. Because once it starts, the economy starts getting opened up, you and me are able to walk freely in the, uh, in the, in the country without wearing the mask. That means risk has gone. Therefore, we can actually go and buy, but people cannot go and buy. Because the memory of pandemic will still be there in your mind. Therefore, you will not become a spender. You will still be a saver. If you don't spend, you only save, how the economy will grow. Because all of that also spend equally. So that something will also come. Suddenly, the economists will start saying, no, no, spend savings have gone up quite substantially. People have not been spending enough. Therefore, economic growth is not, uh, is not going up as much as expected. You will see these kind of stories coming in in 2023. This is the market correcting. The only way you can protect your interest, uh, one, if you already have overexposed to equity, uh, choose a fund that can have a mix of uh, equity and fixed income. That's one way of doing it, like balance or don't it fund kind of things can help you in protecting that. Or the asset allocation model that is being advised by yourself. That's something just keep in mind. Like I think I, I liked one of your slide. I think you put an emergency fund. So emergency fund, you don't need to create every now and then. You need to have some small portion. But emergency fund will give you the least possible return, but it will give you capital protection. It will come in handy for you a bad period. That's something again. Instead of calling emergency fund, you call it a safe fund, which can actually be used to actually take it to actually risky fund when the market falls. That is what comes in the asset allocation. That 68, as you mentioned about uh, equity, 15% expectation, 7. I think if you just keep a close eye on this and build your portfolio, even during a downfall, it will come in handy. Perfect, sir. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, now, there is a question. Uh, he says that I am a risk averse investor. Uh, should he look at passive investing like index investing? Can that be an option for a long term goals like buying a house for, up, up, let's say, after 10 years or for his retirement? Can he uh, go for passive investing? Will you suggest that or going for active funds uh, makes sense? See, I think one of the things he mentioned about risk averse. The risk averse is not, then ETF is not the right product because ETF is also a risky product, except it's got low expenses. So the question actually I always tell people, how many times we all buy this thing because of expenses? So well, nobody buys any product saying the expenses are low or expenses are high because I know for sure that if I take power as a sector, there are two players providing power, somebody is giving a lower than somebody else who actually switch actually from one to other because there is lower, you don't switch actually. Same way between ETF and active managed funds, the expenses are very reasonable. Therefore, don't ever make your investment on the basis of expenses. You make your investment on the basis of the what is the risk you can take, and within the risk asset class, ETF include. I would say include ETF in your asset allocation, include ETF in index fund as part of your overall allocation you make in risky asset class. But if your risk covers, completely risk covers, Again, question yourself, what risk covers? Sometimes risk covers becomes a yeah, norm for everybody to say. You ask anybody, are you a risk taker? They'll say, I don't take a risk taker. If you're not a risk taker, how will you plan your future? Therefore, risk everybody has to take. Therefore, you have to only just remember what risk I'm taking, what period of risk I'm taking. Just keep this in mind. ETF and index fund are risky asset class because at the same time, invest in the same equity asset class as any open fund invest. Therefore, that is just keep this in mind. But don't go where the expenses are low. Therefore, this is a good fund or that fund. But expenses is a function of various things. But go where the asset allocation strategy. Within that, consider actually managed funds and consider ETF also along with that. All right. So we can actually include passive fund along with active funds for our long-term goals. So yeah, that's the answer uh, for the question. Um, coming to the sector allocations. And uh, so there is a question. For next five to ten years, what are those uh, few sectors which look very, very promising at this point in time? 
and generally how do people uh, people who are looking for sector investing what are things they need to look so that they can go ahead and pick these kind of sectors so see i think we only differentiate because sector again off late i keep hearing this very frequently uh, what sector to invest which theme to invest and so on and so forth and see investment principle remains the same it doesn't go by the sector investment principle is something i call it as a structurally high growth sector structurally cyclical sector structurally domestic cyclical versus global cyclical that is i call it as a four part in mean, investment world this is a principle that works sir you you also ask a question structurally high growth sectors in the country if you ask there are many sectors will fall in the place structurally high growth sectors are the fmcg structurally high growth sectors is the banking sectors structurally high growth sectors such as pharma structurally high growth sectors in it and infrastructure cyclical sectors are more like metals will go through ups and downs global cyclicals they are global cyclicals automobiles domestic cyclicals if you and me don't buy automobiles automobiles will not get sold they are all domestic cyclicals real estate domestic cyclical that depending upon yeah the buyer see these are all not regularly consumed real estate i cannot buy every now and then i have automobiles i cannot buy a car every day so i have to I'll buy only a car only in 7 years so or maybe 8 years 10 years so they will go through ups and downs therefore when you choose a six six sectors when you choose a sectoral fund you ask a simple fundamental question is it a structurally longer term story in terms of sector in which i was in digital india fund that we have clearly a lot of people ask a question thematic funds so why should i put money here that's not the question that is asked the question is is it actually digital technology is it for this generation or next fundable generation if the question is for multiple generations will survive and remain a strong player and generate growth that become thematic but structurally growth story so that is why one has to look at between diverse with even as a money man and allocate money that's why allocate money to various sectors so that's something keep in mind if we take that way banking finance service fund digital india fund uh, fmc related fund pharma fund they all will come in the longer term structurally sound allocation their own can make right i think that was really useful sir uh, because many a time people uh, who are investing they go with the names and uh, names can actually uh, may not be uh, the right way or may not project in the right way so this is a great strategy that you asked there one more point i just want to reach up there so, i think the cyclical thematic fund if you have to take is the uh, clear example of infrastructure fund yeah. it's a cyclical so you right. can build infrastructure for 3 4 year period after that you lot only maintain it that's a cyclical will give a fantastic return three year period will not give a return uh, subsequent to that so when you select that's where you have to differentiate so in cyclical your entry and exit needs to be timed uh, to make great returns yeah whereas if you are looking at structurally sound for next 10 years like a it or a banking probably even if you are there for long term you don't have to time that better so exactly yeah. exactly perfect so i think uh, we are almost done uh, with our q and a session sir uh, it was a fantastic round of uh, presentation and then followed up with a quick q and a Q&A round uh, i'm sure our investors uh, like always have made a lot of notes and they will implement them in their investment journey so thank you so much sir uh, for joining with us uh, once again and uh, uh, giving such a useful tips to our investors thank you thank you prashant and it's my pleasure to be a part of uh, bro and i've been i was the first person to uh, give a, a talk in your platform when it began at uh, the platform about 6 5 6 years back 7 uh, years back yeah i'm happy to be again part of the same platform today talking to you and talking to your investors thank you thank you thank you always pleasure to have you sir thank you and uh, once again wishing everyone a happy ganesh chaturthi and uh, auspicious festival enjoy your day uh, stay safe stay healthy thank you